हेलो सर नवीन सिंगर सर यस सर शल स्टार्ट सर यस यस ओके सर थैंक यू ओके सो वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून पार्टिसिपेंट्स वेलकम टू डे वन एंड सेशन टू एईसीटी स्पॉन्सर्ड सिक्स डेज ऑनलाइन शॉर्ट टर्म ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऑन emerging trends and research challenges in next generation wireless network uh, today our resource person uh, mr navin shankar field application engineer pentable technologies bangalore so given uh, a topic cognitive radio and its applications uh, before going to the session uh, small introduction about uh, today our resource person Very good afternoon to everyone gathered here. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. I am saying about the person who is none other than our today's resource person, Mr. Navin Shankar. Before going to session, let me see the short intro about our resource person. He completed his Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical, Electronics, and Communication Engineering at Srinivasa Institute of Engineering and Technology at 2010, and completed his Master of Engineering in Applied Electronics at Bellamore Engineering College at 2013. He is working as a field application engineer at Entabul Technologies, Bangalore, since 2017. His role includes a logical and physical synthesis. PNR flow consists of various steps such as floor plan, power plan, sanity check, placement, clock tree synthesis, routing, and design optimization. having experiences of 2 years in the field of application engineer for eda products he has supported on some of the design related queries at di current levels like hotel design hotel synthesis physical design physical verification in pdf he is also trained in the asic physical design and custom ic design with hands on experiences in a back end design for including a synthesis flow planning power planning placement clock tree analysis routing static timing analysis and physical verification he acted as a chat person and delivered a special lectures in various conferences workshops and various funded programs in this way i would like to hand over the session to our resource person mr navin shankar please sir uh yes uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, uh, once again uh, thank the management of kongunadu college of uh, engineering and technology uh, for providing me this opportunity uh, to work on a session so let me share my screen first okay i think uh, you should be able to see my screen if it is not visible then please let me know okay is my screen visible uh participants is my screen visible yes sir visible sir yeah yeah okay thank you uh is my audio clear yes sir everything perfect sir yeah thank you uh so uh this is uh, my second session in this uh, uh workshop particular workshop okay previously i have uh, delivered a lecture on uh, mixed signal design and uh, currently we are uh, going to have a, a look at the next generation wireless networks okay in that we are going to look about uh, we are going to have a brief introduction about cognitive radio and then we are going to uh, look at uh, design of data acquisition system uh, using orcad pspis okay which is uh, uh, one of the softwares uh, that can be used in order to uh, design a test system okay uh, with the ics that are already available in market okay and test its behavior so that uh, when you go for real time system okay uh, uh, or when you are trying to design a, a circuit or a data acquisition system on a breadboard or uh, some other uh, some other uh, uh, modes okay you will have an idea okay what uh, on what to expect and what not to expect from that uh, uh, particular design okay so that is why we have a, a software which is uh, uh widely used across industries okay which is orcad pspis and uh, uh, this software is available in market right from 1988 onwards and right now it is a product of uh, 
uh, cadence okay so it is coming out from cadence okay uh, cadence in case if you are not aware uh, is a, a very popular EDA tool that is used for IC design fabrication and testing okay and also for sign off okay so let us move uh, quickly into our uh, topic of interest today's topic uh, okay so we'll start with the let me discuss the agenda with you uh, so we'll start with a brief introduction about NTFL technologies and then we'll uh, have an introduction about cognitive radio okay and then we'll move into a system okay so uh, in case if you are designing a cognitive radio you need a transmitter system and a receiver system right uh, so we'll have a discussion about what are the blocks available within uh, a system uh, within a transmitter system or a, a receiver system okay and how to design okay uh, data acquisition system uh, followed by that okay so in case if you are looking for a data acquisition system what are the how uh, how can how will you acquire the system okay what are the blocks required to acquire a system uh, uh, so uh, we already have certain ic's that are available uh, within the orcad pspice library itself so what we are going to do is we are going to design a real time system okay uh, a real system and then compare its performance with whatever is available uh, for example uh, you you will uh, require uh, an analog to digital converter okay uh, when you are uh, using any type of uh, uh, data acquisition systems like a, a transmitter or a receiver okay so you need uh, an analog to digital converter because whatever signals that are present around us um, are analog in nature, right? Like uh, whatever we see, whatever we hear, okay? Everything are analog signals, okay? So how to convert those analog signals into digital signal is, uh, is why we need uh, an analog to digital converter. And uh, uh, we are just going to have a look at how to design such kind of system and compare its results with whatever is available. We already have an analog to digital converter uh, called uh, with an IC number 0808 and 0708. So uh, we are just going to compare uh, its performance with whatever we, are, uh, we have designed, okay? So let us move into uh, the topics. So we'll start with a brief introduction about NTFL. So we are a design service product and engineering solution provider in cutting edge technologies uh, like electronic system design, PLSI or semiconductors, electrical drives and renewable energy systems, RF and antenna, additive manufacturing, mechanical, finite elemental analysis, computational fluid dynamics, PCP design and prototyping solutions, IoT and data sciences. This, okay. These are the domains in which we are uh, uh, currently working on mechanical, computational fluid dynamics, electromagnetic systems, uh, uh, semiconductors, e-mobility, uh, which is uh, most popular nowadays. Okay, and uh, PCB design, PCB prototyping, 3D printing, indented test, vector network analyzer, RF solutions, uh, and the cyber security, internet of things and power electronics. Okay, uh, so uh, quick facts about NTOPL. We were incorporated on January 1st, 2010, and we are a 10 year old company headquartered at Bangalore. And along with that, we have our regional offices at Delhi, Pune, Ahmedabad, and Hyderabad. Total number of offices is 13 and uh, overall team size is around 150. Okay, here it is mentioned as 135. And uh, uh, most of our customers are academicians. Okay, and along with that, we also work on uh, research and development uh, and the public sector companies like DRDO, uh, BHEL, BEL, etc. Uh, staff split, uh, we have over 35 sales representatives and uh, uh, more than 75 technical uh, members. Okay, so you can see the staff split there itself. 
uh, the number of technical team, number of uh, people in the technical team is far more greater than the sales representative. So you can have an idea about our technical team strength. Okay. And uh, our services are, uh, uh, are, uh, are expanded to wide range of applications. Okay. So that is why we have such a, a huge number of uh, technical team members. And these are our uh, channel partners. Uh, okay, so um, uh, NTUPL Technologies, we are uh, the academic channel partners for ANSYS, Cadence, and ORCAD. Along with that, uh, we also uh, work on Android Su, Bungard, MITS Electronics for uh, PCB prototyping machines, Nevati Systems for uh, uh, Material Sciences, okay, Nanatom. Uh, EOS, Ntuple, e Mobility, Semicron, and Excel VLSI for training services. Okay, uh, so let us start with our today's topic of interest, which is uh, cognitive radio. Uh, so, what is your idea on cognitive radio? So, you can uh, let me know on chat, or you can also unmute yourselves and let me know uh, about your idea on cognitive radios. Uh, I would like to have it as an interactive session rather than uh, only me talking uh, throughout the entire two hours. Let me know your queries then and there or uh, you can uh, make a note of it and uh, uh, let me know your queries during the QA session that is uh, last half an hour. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what is your idea on cognitive radio? So you can either unmute yourselves and let me know your answer or you can just type it on chat. What is your idea on cognitive radios? Yes, anybody? Anyone participants? I guess most of you should be from wireless uh, networks or wireless communication background. So, yes. Uh, don't feel like it might be uh, uh, a wrong answer or not. Don't be, don't be worried, uh, worried by that, okay? So you are here to correct yourselves in case if you are wrong. Okay, so don't worry about whether your answers would be wrong or correct, right? Yes. Yes, participants. So Kostab Kulkarni uh, is telling me like thinking in human's perspective. Okay. Anybody else from the crowd? Smart wireless device. So Kartikeyan Durai Swami is, uh, has given me an answer like smart wireless device. Okay. Anybody else? Smart wireless device. So Kartikeyan is uh, somewhat closer to the answer. Anybody else participants? Any other answers? Fine. Uh, let us move forward. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Naveen is giving me an answer. Computer radio is that can be programmed and configured dynamically to use wireless channel. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one small correction in your definition, Naveen. It is not. Uh, uh, wireless channel, it is about spectrum, okay, because uh, uh, let me move over the, uh, to the presentation, okay, so when you are trying to uh, transmit a message or send a signal, uh, you transmit it over a spectrum, right, uh, and you have wide range of spectrum. Uh, certain spectrum will be used for mobile communication. Certain spectrum will be used for uh, channels. Okay, certain uh, spectrum will be used for uh, uh, 
uh, radios okay so so if you have a look at the spectrum you have uh, so, some uh, in the ism band okay industry scientific and uh, medical band and you'll be having something like uh, 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 wireless communication band, you'll be having something like uh, uh, mobile communication. So like, like that, okay? So you have different frequencies uh, that are uh, uh, listed out in the spectrum, okay? So among that, okay, certain uh, spectrums will be very busy all the time. Okay, certain spectrum, some of the spectrum will be busy for a uh, fixed duration of time. Okay, and some of them will be uh, uh, will be barely used. Okay, so like that. Uh, so what you are going to do is uh, you are going to pick up a spectral frequency which is free. Okay, uh, irrespective of the band. Okay, so that is what uh, cognitive radio does. It dynamically chooses the spectrum. Okay, it is not uh, fixed to a particular uh, spectrum of frequency. It is uh, it chooses whichever is available at that point of time. Okay, based on whether they are busy or whether they are free uh, at a particular point of time. Okay, so that is why we say as cognitive radios can support new wireless users in existing crowded spectrum without degrading the performance of existing users. Okay, uh, and the test it utilizes advanced communication and signal processing techniques. Okay, coupled with novel spectrum allocation policies, and uh, uh, the technology that cognitive radio provides us could revolutionize the way spectrum is allocated worldwide. Okay, and it also provides sufficient bandwidth to support higher quality and higher data rate products and services. Okay, so that is what we were uh, talking about. Uh, let me just give you an example. So nowadays, uh, uh, in olden days, we used to have a, a single dish, okay, and there will be a cable TV operator uh, who will be monitoring uh, or who will be taking the connections from those dish that, uh, uh, co that collects n number of frequencies because each and every channel that you are able to uh, visualize on your television are of uh, different frequencies right so uh, he'll be able to he'll be uh, able to segregate each and every uh, channels okay by uh, use uh, by uh, using a dish okay that was olden days now each and every house has a separate dish Okay, each and every one of us can uh, segregate the uh, segregate the channels. Okay, and uh, that is uh, why we have a set top box. Okay, and we have access uh, to, to channels whichever we uh, we are we like the most. Okay, or we uh, or we pay for a package. Okay, or we uh, pay for whatever channels we see. Okay, pay as per uh, as per the usage. Okay, so that is the technology nowadays. Okay, so what you do, each and every service provider will be uh, providing you with the channels based on cost. Okay, and you uh, either you choose it or they provide certain packages. Okay, and accordingly you uh, make the payment. Okay, and it is not a, not going to be a fixed cost. Okay, it is going to be as per the channels that you choose. Okay, like that. Uh, so uh, in that case, you'll be uh, visualizing certain channels very often and certain channel channels you don't uh, see at all. And uh, uh, so that is based on uh, the occupancy and the number of viewers. Okay. So if, uh, uh, if uh, there are a thousand uh, people in a particular area and all of them are glued to a particular channel, okay, then that particular frequency is busy all the time, right? So uh, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we cannot choose that particular frequency or we cannot work on that particular frequency. So it is left only for that particular channel. Okay, so suppose we should, and it is also based on geographical location. Okay, uh, in case if you are in Tamil Nadu uh, right now, okay, uh, most of the Tamil channels, okay, will be uh, will be visualized. 
okay only cha- tamil channels whereas uh, uh, people who watch uh, uh, hindi channels or telugu channels or kannada channels will be very less in number so those uh, frequencies those uh, t- telugu channel frequencies or malayalam channel frequencies will be free in tamil nadu but whereas if you go to their respective region where uh, if you go to andhra pradesh or if you go to karnataka then those particular frequencies will be most widely viewed whereas uh, tamil channel frequencies will be badly used like that okay so uh, uh, the frequencies that are used for a channel or the frequencies that are uh, uh, that are used by mobile phones okay whichever is free which will be most uh, mostly busy all the time as of now for the current situation it will be the mobile phone frequencies okay so what can we do what can a cognitive radio do it can choose a frequency from any spectrum okay whichever is free okay and make use of it okay and that is how you are going to revolutionize okay? the the way spectrum is allocated okay uh, so right now we have a separate spectrum for each and every frequency uh, we have separate spectrum of frequency for uh, a particular application and each of them is called as a separate band of frequencies okay so we are going will be making use of that particular band alone whereas in future what happens is it will be like uh, choose whichever is free okay and make use of it pay accordingly okay that will be the uh, future okay when it comes to wireless communication and uh, cognitive radio best serves that particular application okay and uh, uh, it is an intelligently exploit double it intelligently exploits the available side of information about channel conditions activity code books messages or other nodes in which they share the spectrum okay because uh, uh, cognitive radio doesn't uh, concentrate on a particular band of frequency or a particular spectrum it chooses the frequency or it chooses a spectrum whichever is free at that particular point of time okay so that is why it has access to everything okay and you are not going to uh, access everything you are going to make use of whatever you require right so that is what so these are the functionality of cognitive radio spectrum sensing spectrum management spectrum sharing and spectrum mobility so out of these things we are going to concentrate on spectral sensing alone because it is a wide area cognitive radio is a wide wide area and just two hours is not uh sufficient for us to discuss all the four uh, uh, functionalities just i'll give an intro about each and every function function then you can uh, uh, refer uh, in number of uh, um, documents that are available uh, research papers that are available in ieee okay you can refer in number of resources and uh, enhance your knowledge so as of now we are just concentrating on uh, spectrum sensing alone uh, so what is spectrum sensing okay so you have a wide range of frequency and you just uh, make use of a particular frequency or a particular spectrum which is free at that particular point of time okay and next comes the spectrum management okay so you have a wide range of spectrum okay so uh, how do you manage that for different applications or for different processes or for uh, different uh, signals different type of signals okay so that is what we call as spectrum management uh, can the same spectrum be used for uh, in number of applications or two or three applications yeah, the answer is yes okay so that is why we have a technique called uh, spectrum sharing okay uh, spectrum if a spectrum has nearly uh, 35 uh, range of frequencies you can use uh, uh, 10 for one application 10 for another application and the uh, 15 for another application uh, so you can split the spectrum the sp- split the available spectrum okay and spectrum mobility in the sense uh, when you uh, when you move from one region to another we cannot assure uh like the same spectrum will be available uh, will be free over the next range of uh, 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 next uh, 
coverage area okay because uh, as i said it is uh, dependent on geographical locations spectrum is a depend spectrum occupancy is dependent on geographical uh, location okay so that is why spectrum mobility is one of the function that has to be concentrated on upon okay and then all these applications all these functions can be uh, understood uh, by going through a cognitive cycle okay so once you sense a particular spectrum okay it is you, you, you are going to analyze the spectrum hole information so what is spectrum hole whichever spectrum is free whichever uh, frequency in that particular spectrum is free okay so that is referred to as hole okay so you get the uh, you pass the spectrum uh, hole uh, spectrum hole information for uh, analyzing the particular spectrum and uh, uh, then get the information about channel capacity and this uh, channel capacity information will be sent to the spectrum decision maker okay so you have a specific tool which decides upon uh, which spectrum can be used and for what duration you can make use of that particular spectrum okay so those things uh, are taken care of by a spectrum decision maker okay and once it is decided upon uh, you the signal will be transmitted to the radio environment where uh, uh, the cognitive radios uh, are connected with each other connected to each other okay and then you receive the rf stimuli whether uh, you are going to connect to uh, for, for which uh, spectrum or which radio you are going to be connected okay so that will be uh, that information will be passed on uh, through a through an rf stimuli because uh, if you talk about uh, uh, wireless signals okay it is going to be uh, microwave signals that are going to get uh, transmitted between two antennas okay two wireless antennas okay so that is why microwave as well as rf signals so uh, that is why we concentrate on rf stimuli okay uh, so uh, i'm not diving deep into each and every topic because uh, i guess you all are more knowledgeable than me in wireless communications okay so and you have any number of uh, reference papers and research papers in order to dive deep into the topics okay so next comes uh, uh, next we move into the spectrum sensing i think i have a message on chat uh, so I have a question from Kannan Subramaniam whether spectrum hole should be shared with neighbors to fix uh, for use. Okay, it can be shared. Okay, that is why we have a spectrum management system. Okay, spectrum management is one of the functionality. Okay, it can be shared and it is uh, based on uh, the person, based on the provider, spectrum provider okay and uh, as i said it is also based on geographical locations each and every uh, it depends on country okay uh, country policies each and every country will be having their own uh, spectrum sharing policy right uh, that is why we are telling like it is um, it is also concentrated on geographical location okay so in case if a government wishes to share a spectrum between two different users they can do it it is based on their policy okay so uh, it is all it is also already already always based on the government policies okay yes uh, i think i have i answered your query kanan is that fine yeah thank you so let us move about, let us have a look at a spectrum sensing. Uh, so spectrum sensing is to obtain an awareness about the spectrum usage and existence of primary users in a geographical area. Okay, and uh, uh, based on that, you sense uh, uh, which spectrum provides you with the opportunity to connect, to stay connected uh, between uh, two service providers or uh, to make use of a particular frequency and how to use it, which frequency is it, and for what duration of time or at uh, uh, which time instance that particular uh, uh, spectrum is available. So all these details. So uh, how do you get all these details? It is based upon a collection of information. Okay. Uh, 
uh, and it, uh, it has to be done for uh, a wide range of time, timing instance. Okay, so uh, if you have an analysis report over uh, for uh, uh, for a duration of one week, then you'll have then you can analyze which spectrum is going to be uh, uh, free for that particular uh, instance of time. Say, for example, if you have a time duration uh, so, uh, for around 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. So for this half an hour duration, which spectrum is going to be free? Okay, so how do you, uh, uh, how do you get the information of which uh, uh, spectrum is going to be free over previous data? Okay, based on yesterday's data or last week's data, Okay, so collection of information is always required in order to uh, check about which spectrum uh, provides you with the opportunity of using that for, uh, at that particular point of time or whichever is free. Okay. So that is about the spectrum analysis and the, these are the sensing methods. Okay, so for uh, spe spectrum sensing, you have the methods like transmission detection, cooperative detection, interference, temperature detection, mashed filter detection, energy detection, and cyclostationary uh, detection, uh, all these things. And for uh, each and every uh, uh, type of sensing methods, you have a specific algorithm that works in the background. Okay, so you should be having an idea of that algorithms also. So as of now, uh, we'll uh, move ahead. Uh, so the, uh, I just mentioned the sensing uh, sensing methodologies, okay. And uh, uh, for uh, spectrum sensing, you have uh, various paradigms, okay. And it starts with underlay, interweave, and overlay. Uh, so cognitive radios are constrained to cause minimal interference to non-cognitive radios, and uh, so. So you have uh, two coverage, you have a number of coverage regions, right? If you have a, have an antenna or if you have a, a mobile, for example, you can consider a mobile phone tower. Okay, so uh, if you have a tower, it covers a certain square kilometer of area, right? If you go, if you are going out of that coverage area, then what happens, you will feel, uh, uh, you will feel lack of connectivity right uh, for a moment you will lose connectivity with whomever you are talking so or there will be a, a breakage in communication okay so uh, that is why uh, when you are uh, uh, so there should not be any interference between those two coverage areas whether it is with respect to cognitive radio or non-cognitive radio uh, the signal interference should be avoided Okay, and uh, uh, that is one of the major concerns when you are talking about underlay. Okay, and uh, then you have something called interweave. Okay, cognitive radios find and exploit spectral holes to avoid interfering with the non cognitive radios. Okay, and uh, uh, since we are talking about smart devices, cognitive radio is one such uh, device which will uh, uh, analyze the spectral holes okay, that are available. Okay, just a second. Okay, uh, sorry for the break. Okay, and uh, uh, interweaving. Okay, uh, we stopped at interweaving, right? So cognitive radio find up uh, finds applications and uh, uh, exploits the spectral holes to avoid interference with non-cognitive radios. And uh, when you are talking about overlay, okay, uh, cognitive radios over here and enhance the non-cognitive radio transmissions. Okay, it is not only with respect to uh, uh, cognitive radio signals. It is also with respect to non-cognitive radio transmissions uh, because uh, the interference may cause uh, uh, some disturbances, okay? So these disturbances have to be overcome, 
okay if uh, you have any disturbances then obviously there is an overlap in signals right uh, so for example crosstalk okay so crosstalk is uh, one of the best example for overlay uh, uh, overlay overlay thing okay so then you have let us move into the underlay systems we have those paradigms but what are those and how are they uh, overcome is what we are going to see now the cognitive radios determine their interference in transmission uh, transmission and it causes two non-cognitive nodes also okay and if the interference is below a threshold uh, threshold value okay then it is fine if it is over a uh, certain uh, threshold value then uh, you have to uh, you have to take that into consideration and move over to the next uh, next range of frequencies or ne next range of spectrum or uh, next spectral hold okay so the interference constraint may be met via wideband signaling in order to maintain the interference below the noise floor okay uh, whether it is a spread spectrum or ultra wideband spectrum and via multiple antennas and beam forming okay so uh, any doubts till now uh, like uh, till now in underlay systems participants in case if you have any doubts you can let me know inter i have a question from kannan subramaniam uh, interweaving is different from interference yes kannan uh, both are completely different interference in the sense uh, for example just imagine that you are uh, uh, talking on a mobile phone okay uh, in in between where, when you are talking to a friend okay in between you can hear some other uh, signals or some other voice okay uh, who is not in connection with both of you crosstalk okay so that is what we call as interference okay inter interweaving in the sense uh, so it 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 will be like a common frequency which can be used for two different applications hope that is clear interweaving uh, usage may increase efficiency uh, a kind of okay so uh, in case if the frequency is uh, if a spectrum is uh, free for a particular point of time you can make use of it right rather than uh, leaving it without uh, without any activity you can use it for some applications okay you can use it to transmit some messages okay so uh, uh, interweaving is always uh, uh, always improves the efficiency uh so hope the hope the query is answered okay i can see okay sir from kan uh, any other queries participants until this uh, uh, up to underlay systems in case if you have any queries you can let me know otherwise we'll move forward any other queries okay so let us move forward uh, in case if you have any queries you can uh, uh, stop me then and there or i have i also have access to uh, access to the chat box uh, so there is one more query from kannan what is noise floor uh, okay uh just let me give an example uh so just imagine i am talking to you right is my audio clear do you feel any disturbance now no right right now there are no disturbances now just check okay now you are able to hear my voice okay audio now listen carefully i just knocked on the table okay so you were able to hear that signal separately now just listen to this underlay systems uh, are uh, uh, are a part of uh, 
one of the applications of cognitive radio. So you were able to hear uh, the knocking as well as my audio, right? So when uh, when you hear both together at the same time, right? So you don't get the information clearly, right? So similar to this, okay, you will have uh, a, a disturbance when you ha uh, have some sort of disturbances and when you are transfer trying to transfer some information okay so those disturbances will be there throughout the transmitting channel okay that is what we call as noise floor okay so you can avoid or you can suppress the noise signals uh, by improving the signal strength okay while transmitting itself uh, send the signals of higher strength so that uh, uh, the the noise that is trying to segregate or disintegrate your signals, uh, those effects will be very minimal. Okay, so that is one of the uh, one of the methodology followed in uh, industries nowadays. Yeah, uh, is that was that clear, Kanan? For that purpose only, spread spectrum is used. Yes, correct. Anything else that you wanted to ask? Anything else, Kanan, that you wanted me wanted to ask me? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think we shall move forward. Okay, so next we have a look at the challenges okay so in case if you uh, what are the challenges in making use of the spectrums okay so first one is to measure the interference at a primary receiver and to measure the direction of primary node for beam steering okay and uh, uh, you also face challenges with policies that are uh, provided by each and every uh, state government or the and the central governments okay so underlays typically coexist with the licensed users so when you are when you are a licensed user you pay a huge cost for a particular spectrum of frequency and uh, uh, when you uh, why do you do that because you don't want to face any uh, problems like underlay or overlay and you insist on a very stringent frequency constraints and uh, severe, uh, this also severely limits the underlay capabilities and its applications. Okay, so uh, these are some of the challenges. You have uh, uh, more uh, challenges when you uh, talk about signal transmission and when you are talking about coverage area, uh, et cetera, you will be having uh, more and more challenges in that uh, point of time. Right now we are giving, we are just touching upon the most basic level only at the top level. We are not going deep into the concepts, okay? Yeah. Uh, so in order to overcome those challenges, we go for ultra wideband radio, which uses uh, 7.5 gigahertz of free spectrum uh, for underlay, okay? Ultra wideband uh, radio is an impulse radio that sends, uh, sends the pulses of, uh, uh, pulses in the range of tens of picoseconds to nanoseconds and uh, the duty cycle of the uh, duty cycle is only for a fraction of percent and the carrier is not necessarily needed it uses because it uses a lot of bandwidth in the gigahertz range okay and it also has a high data rates of up to 500 mbps with very low power consumption okay so multipath uh, is Multipath is highly resolvable, uh, resolvable and it has both good effects as well as bad effects. Good effects in the sense, uh, the transmission time is, uh, time will be very less, but when it comes to bad effects, interference is most likely to be uh, the disadvantage. Okay, so that is the main reason why it failed to achieve commercial success and uh, uh, that is why cognitive radio and smart radios are uh, uh, still uh, mostly preferred 
okay and uh, there is a wide range of applications and uh, scope is also there uh, in order for uh, uh, advancement and improvement okay in uh, uh, in SERs and uh, uh, cognitive radios okay uh, and we also have should have an idea about null, null space learning in memo uh, cognitive radio uh, networks okay so the performance of cognitive radio suffers from inter interference constraints in uh, MIMO systems okay the secondary users can utilize the null space of primary users channel without interfering okay so the challenge for cognitive radio is to learn and then transmit within the null space okay and uh, we also develop blind null space learning algorithms based on simple energy measurements with the fast convergence okay so uh, so this uh, this is one of the network where you can uh, where the cognitive radio is uh, uh, mostly preferred okay and uh, it, it also you can also see the applications uh, and how to uh, do uh, do certain uh, operations okay like uh, uh, making use of certain algorithms uh, that is why it is called a smart radio okay because uh, it figures out which spectrum is free at uh, at a particular point of time and it checks for the duration until which the particular frequency is available and whether it can be split up in case if can, if it is split up how many uh, frequencies can be split up what is the range okay, that can be split up so it decides upon all these things based on certain uh, algorithms that will be running in background okay uh, so hope this is clear in case if you have any doubts you can uh, uh, let me know now before we move into the data acquisition system any doubts till now participants any doubts till now in this uh, cognitive radio if you have any doubts you can let me know now even before we move into the data acquisition system. Is it fine? Yes, sir, you can continue, sir. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, let us move forward with the data acquisition system. Okay, as I have uh, told you earlier, the world around us is analog. Okay, so there will be a need for sensing the physical variables of interest, convert the sensed signals into digital equivalents and store the acquired data. Okay, uh, so in all these processes, even when you talk about the cognitive radio, uh, the sensing system is always uh, a hardware. Okay, then you go on to process and then uh, transmit it to the receiver. So those things can be software module also. Uh, but when it comes to data acquisition system, okay, uh, we are going to check about the front end uh, processes for signal conditioning. Okay, and that is going to be the focus uh, in this session. Okay. So a scaled down data acquisition and storage chain is what we are going to uh, check out and uh, you are going to uh, split each and every block okay into separate uh, academic lab experiments that can be done and at each and every level what you'll have to do is uh, first build a block check which block you are going to uh, check for the application then identify uh, it uh, as a black box okay and then check what all needs to be included into that black box like what is going to be the input port what are going to be the output port what is going to be the processing system what the kind of circuit is going to work on that okay and then uh, uh, check for its outputs inputs and outputs okay then try to connect it with another block okay check what happens okay so like that you'll have to go stage by stage and each of them can be broken down into separate lab experiments Okay, that is what we are going to uh, check about. 
So the requirement for designing a data acquisition system is uh, uh, to, to design and develop a multi-channel data acquisition system and uh, data acquisition and storage system. Uh, if you are acquiring some data, then it has to be stored, right? Otherwise, there is no um, just acquiring, just for acquiring and transmission, we need not have a, a system, okay? It has to be stored in the memory. Okay, so uh, we are we have a dedicated memory control module. Okay, and then the sensor is used to sense the particular uh, signal that is going to get captured at the front end. Okay, and then uh, we are going to capture all these blocks on the RCAT piece by stool. Okay, and then try to simulate it. Right. So uh, the let us go for the functional specification. Okay, the target that is going to be specified is, as I've told you, ADC0808. Uh, why is it uh, given as eight is eight channel? Okay, it is an eight channel successive approximation uh, register based ADC, which works at a frequency of one MSPS. Okay, uh, so Sar, uh, any idea about successive approximation? Any idea about successive approximation? Anyone? If you don't have an idea, you can let me know. I'll just give a small example so that you'll be able to understand that. Yes, I'll give you the background or alone in case if you don't have an idea. Any idea about successive approximation participants? Anyone? If you have an idea, you can unmute yourself and let me know, or you can just type it on chat. Increase step by step. Uh, so Dr. Mandan is coming closer to the answer. Uh, anyway, I'll give an example. Uh, so is pretty close. Uh, anybody else? Staircase. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, just let me give an example. Uh, so uh, you can see the vegetable vendor who is coming on, uh, coming in the street. Okay, so he'll be having uh, a weighing balance. Uh, so on one of the sides, he'll uh, uh, on one side he'll include the vegetables, and on the other side he keeps on increasing the weights, so that he can figure out uh, uh, the unknown weight of those vegetables. Okay, like that. I'll give an example. Okay, so for example, you have uh, 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 you can imagine like you have forty five kg of uh, uh, vegetables. Say you can uh, say onion. You have 45 kg of onion included on one side and on the other side you don't know what is the actual weight right so you have to figure out the weight so what do you do you'll be provided with different weights like 1 kg 2 kg uh, uh, 4 kg 8 kg 16 kg okay like that you'll be provided with various weights okay so first you start with the maximum weight for example if you uh, have 32 kg as the maximum weight you will include include that if both are same if uh, both the weights are same then it will be balanced okay it will uh, it will be a straight line the weighing balance will be a straight line if uh, the weight is more if the weight of vegetable is more then uh, it will be declined on that side if the added weight is more, 32 kg is more, then it will be inclined on this side. So you have only three possibility. So at first, first instance, you know that, uh, for example, I have told you like the unknown weight is going to be 45 kg and you have included 32. Okay, so what happens? It will be declined on, the, on one side. Okay, uh, so for this event, okay, because the unknown weight is greater than the known weight okay so for that this event you will have a logic one okay you will assign a logic one okay so what component does does this activity a comparator 
okay in case if uh, uh, b is greater than a okay then your comparator gives an output one okay if b is less than a then your comparator gives a uh, logic zero as the output like this okay this will be the event so next uh, after 32 kg you have the next uh, weight available as 16 kg so 32 plus 16 you have it as 48 kg right so here your unknown weight is less than known weight so the uh, event output is going to be zero okay so next you uh, you remove that you remove 16 kg because 32 plus 16 is however greater right so you remove 16 and the next available weight to you is 8 kg okay so 32 plus 8 is 40 which is again less than the unknown unknown weight so the output for that event will be one okay then you add the next one after uh, 8 kg you have the next weight as 4 kg so 32 plus 8 plus 4 is 44 again less than the unknown weight okay so for this you will have a uh, have the output as one okay next you have the available weight as 2 kg so 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 is again 46 greater than the unknown weight so this side uh, the uh, uh, weighing balance will get declined to the other side okay so this is removed so the output for this event is zero now you have the final weight as one so 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 what do you get 45 now it will be balanced it will remain it will you if you check it will be the it will be a straight line okay so this is how your analog data is going to be converted into digital form okay by a this is this technology is called successive approximation which dated back to 1940s okay to solve the simple mathematical problems this technique was used okay now the analog to digital converter okay that uh, that is mentioned here adc0808 is this ba works based on this algorithm okay and you have a target memory specified which is uh, automotive grade a as 6 c6264 okay which is 8k by 8 bit cmos sram okay and you have a control mod module to facilitate the necessary controls that is for sampling conversion memory read and write operation etc okay the system is to acquire data sequentially from channel in0 to in7 because we are talking about an 8 bit uh, adc okay and rollover okay the acquired data is to be stored in a respective memory page allocated to the channels the control module is to have its own dedicated clock the sensor that is going to be used is an electric microphone okay as i have told it's going to be an analog signal okay uh, so you'll have when you are designing any type of blocks you'll have certain constraints for example if you are designing a cognitive radio uh, you can design it for a specific band of frequency or uh, just imagine that you are designing an implantable antenna okay if you are designing an implantable antenna it has to work work on ism band frequency right uh, like between 2.54 gigahertz okay so uh, like that you will have certain constraints so like that uh, for the system for the data acquisition system that we are about to design we have uh, certain constraints like uh, this should be the analog power supply okay either it can be used either plus or minus 12 volt or uh, 5 volt okay you should use any one of these supply voltages and you, there can be some 10 percent plus or minus 10 percent of uh, the uh, wave off okay so digital power supply you are going you should make use of only plus 5 volt and uh, supply current has to be estimated uh, the performance target is unconstrained because it has to be uh, it should be capable of uh, uh, sensing uh, or detecting any type of signal okay so uh, 
uh, okay we uh, we ha you can ask me one doubt we are uh, we already have some microcontroller units that can do uh, the, do do these things okay why don't we use that because uh, a microcontroller unit will be designed only for uh, academic purpose that is learning purpose but you are going to design your own data acquisition system that will sense it process it and store it and then transmit it okay so you are going to design your own system whereas a microcontroller unit uh, that is already available will have is only for academic process like uh, to perform uh, uh, to perform an addition operation or to uh, just uh, capture uh, some analog signals and then send it to another block okay like that it cannot be made use for a uh, bigger uh, application or a uh, bigger design okay so that is why we are designing our own okay and we are going to compare its results with ideal uh, adc that is already available so the best uh, design approach will be top down approach so what is what does that mean first you will have to design uh first you'll have to uh, think about the design as a black box so you neglect whatever is unwanted uh, whatever is uh, not required okay just think about it as a black box so if you are thinking about it as a black box you'll have only uh, the input nets and the output nets. so you decide upon what how many input ports are required and how many output ports are required now you will be uh, dropping one level down so top level you'll be able to see only the box so what should be there within the box you have some functional modules okay so that is what we call as the regularity okay so you'll have functional and structural regularities okay and then you drop one level down again so within the uh, top level module uh, within the black box you have certain other blocks like memory unit uh, you'll have some uh, interfacing modules which can be usb okay or you'll have uh, network connectivity elements like uh, bluetooth uh, wi-fi module etc or ethernet port okay and then you'll have some power supply modules okay so what is going to be within these modules is uh, when is when we go for a modularity level okay and then we come into locality okay where are these modules going to be uh, used and how are they going to be placed and how are they going to be interconnected okay uh, and these things doesn't depend on uh, the connection boundaries what is going to be the uh, input and output boundaries for those blocks okay so this is the first step i am visualizing this as a uh, black box so i know only the input and output ports what is going to be the supply okay supply lines ground lines and i have a, a clock signal for analog to digital conversion and system clock okay and then we go one level down identify various inputs and outputs at the block level boundaries okay this may also include incoming uh, signals uh, or incoming control signals or outgoing signals or outgoing control signals etc okay uh, so i keep repeating this step until i achieve at the target devices that are required okay so finally once i achieve once i uh, achieve at uh, this uh, structure okay i come to the overall system diagram sorry okay uh, just a second i am facing some issues uh, sir hello Uh, sir, are you there? Hello. 
sir dinesh sir or baskar sir are you there yes sir uh, just a second sir for a moment i am uh, uh, share i am stopping my screen share okay sir okay sir no i am uh, facing some issues with uh, the block diagrams just a second okay sir Uh, is my screen visible now, sir? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay, okay. Sorry, uh, sorry, participants. Sorry for the inconvenience cost. Okay, so I just uh, had some issues with my presentation, so I've got it back. Okay, uh, so uh, these are the steps. We stopped here, right? So uh, we visualize the system as a black box first. So we'll, it will be helpful for us to identify the input and output signals. Okay, and then we'll uh, just check out what is going to be the supply voltage and uh, uh, the ground terminals. Okay, and then we'll uh, check out the system clocks as well as the clock for the overall block. And then we go one level uh, down the hierarchy. Okay. So uh, within that black box, what are going to be the other uh, uh, modules like power supply, uh, reset, okay, so, so uh, reset memory, uh, interfaces, interfacing blocks, etc. Okay, so next we go one level down. What is going to be the component within each and every block? Like you'll be having a resistance resistor you'll be having a capacitor you'll be having uh, uh, transistors okay in case if you talk about uh, uh, 
uh, talk about power supply, you'll be having a step up device, you'll be having a step down device. So what is going to, what is the circuit going to be there within those devices, okay, is what you'll be uh, going about, okay. You'll go down one level by one level and finally you'll arrive at this kind of architecture, okay, overall architecture. So within the black box, you'll be having these modules. And then you'll have to uh, uh, go one down, uh, one level down. Uh, so, for example, if you take uh, an uh, S and H sample and hold block, so what is going to be present? What is going to be the component present within this sample and hold circuit? Okay, and uh, what is going to be the uh, components that are available within the ADC memory control? okay like that you'll have to go down one level uh, one level by one level for each and every blocks right so this will be the overall system architecture for the data acquisition system that is planned okay and this is going to be the functional diagram uh, at which point my uh, supply should be high okay and when should my system go for reset and uh, what is going to be the system clock? What is going to be uh, the uh, clock signal, whether it is an active high or active low clock. And uh, you'll be having different signals, right? Like uh, end of signal, end of, uh, end of conversion, power on reset, channel address, what should be the, because you are going to store the data, right? So for that, uh, what should be the data address? how is that going to be generated and when is that going to be generated? And for if you are generating an address, it has to remain at that particular address for how for a certain time period, right? So what is going to be that time period? So you'll have to check all these things. Okay, so a timing diagram will help you in understanding those things. Just that's why we have created the timing diagram over here. Okay, so when you go for the final output when you check the final output it should match whatever is given here okay so that is how that is how you have to design a particular system okay so let us move for that okay so if you go on this level it turns out to be simple so what are the sub blocks that are going to be used yeah, a power on reset generator which generates power on reset for the system and then you'll have an, an analog to digital uh, adc control generator which senses the end of conversion signal and generates the uh, signals for address latch enable uh, sample and hold circuit and enables the counter okay uh, then you have a program counter which generates uh, adc channel and memory addresses Okay, and then you have latch and decode for the sample and hold circuit block. Okay, so now coming to the first uh, part of the uh, signal. Okay, uh, you are going to have a power on reset generator. So what is the functionality of a power on reset generator? Once you get a reset enable. Okay, so the power supply that is present in your circuit okay should go to active high for example if you are uh, if the supply voltage that is given is 5 volt okay until you get a reset signal it should remain at zero okay zero in the sense it is going to be logic low okay once you get a reset signal it should go to logic high that is 5 volt Okay, so that is why we have this power on reset, sig uh, reset signal generator. And this is the circuit that we use. Okay, uh, we, uh, we not only give you the block diagram, top level block diagram alone, we also give you an insight of what is going to be the circuit and its functionality. Okay, so this is uh, the circuit for power on reset. And then we have the control generator. So the control generator has two sub blocks. One is going to be level two pulse generator and the other one is delay block. Okay, so first one is going to be level two pulse generator. In this, what we have is we have a, a D flip flop. Okay, we have four D flip flop and you can see the functionality over here. 
okay when uh, the level is going to active high when uh, uh, according to the clock okay it is going to be an active high passage uh, uh, passage clock okay po positive edge triggered d flip flop okay so when you have an active high clock and when the level is also uh, level input is also uh, at high what happens is your clear first gets enabled and then uh, once it gets uh, clear goes low and then it goes to high okay uh, and at that point of time you get the pulse generated okay that is why we call it as level to pulse generator okay and then we have the delay block okay for uh, including a delay or to sense the delay we have a cascade of two bit registers okay so for uh, this two bit register we use a d flip flop we use two d flip flops for that okay and uh, then we come into the program counter because you have to uh, generate the data and store it in the uh, in respective addresses right so for uh, generating those addresses you need a counter okay and uh, uh, here we are working on uh, an 8 bit data right so for that you need an 8 bit counter okay we have just given an example for a 4 bit counter and you can expand ex expand this block okay so at the moment you have four d flip flops you can include uh, another four uh, d flip flops to get an 8 bit program counter okay and this is what we we have already in the arcad library so we can compare the performance of both these things uh, there will be some minute variations but in spite of that we can uh, uh, make use of whatever we have built okay uh, rather than uh, using whatever is available we can build our own circuit so that it can be parameterized parameterized in the sense if you are designing a program counter for a two bit data uh, if you are uh, uh, suddenly if your uh, you know, amount of input data input data is going for 16 bits then it should be expandable so whatever output you got for a two bit data should be the same uh, whatever is the functionality for two bit data the same should be replicated if you go for a 16 bit data also okay that is uh, why we are going for our own design okay rather than uh, uh, checking for uh, checking whether uh, the particular uh, uh, program counter is available if it is available no issues if it is not available in that case uh, what will you do okay so that is uh, why we go for our own design okay and then we have uh, latch and decode so why do we have why do we need a latch and decode because if you have a data generated the and if and a particular address is allocated for storing that data until you get a reset signal okay it should be latched on to that particular address right uh, so that is why we go for a latch and a decoder uh, kind of block and this is the overall circuit okay and this is the top level module that we have created okay uh, top level module in the sense a uh, symbol okay a uh, black box kind of thing that we have created for this uh, circuit okay and then we have a sample and hold circuit for this we are making use of an ic lf398 that is already available in market in order to generate the input signal okay uh, you have an analog input and you need to process that and send it to the uh, input blocks okay so that is why we go for a sample and hold circuit to uh, send the analog input data to the processing block okay and uh, uh, we don't we just imagine that we don't have an adc 0808 macro model uh, so we build one okay so how do we build one put all the blocks that we have designed uh, together one by one okay so first we include uh, the four bit counter then we include an eight bit multiplexer okay and then the decoder and then uh, you include a, a block for end of conversion and start conversion okay and check its functionality okay 
So this is how we do it. First, we uh, get the four bit synchronous loadable counter. Okay, four bit synchronous loadable counter. And uh, then we uh, also give the test setup. We have also given the test setup over here. And then we have the multiplexer. Multiplexer, we have designed it using an analog switch itself. Okay, a basic analog switch itself. And then we have created uh, the top level uh, symbol for that. Okay, and then we have the logic for uh, end of conversion and start conversion. Okay, so anyway, I'll be showing. And then we are pu we put all those modules together and we are building the final block ADC, analog to digital converter. Let me show the uh, circuit that we have uh, captured in the uh, Arcad software also. I'm not uh, uh, showing how to capture it because it may take more time. Uh, so we ha I have the design that is already captured. So I'll just show the simulation results alone. So this is for a power on reset. Okay, so just I'll run uh, uh, a transient analysis. Uh, uh, so it is going to be a time domain analysis, right? So that is why I'm uh, showing you the transient analysis. And in case if you are unable to see the signal, I'll just change the properties. Uh, so in case if you are interested in these tools, okay, you can always reach us. Uh, I'll share the email ID. In case if you wish to learn more about this tool, then you can always, always contact us, okay? So you can see the power on reset signal and you can see the output analog signal, okay? Senses the input data and once we get the power on reset enabled, okay? You can see the signal going to active high, okay? So this is about the power on reset. And then we have uh, the other blocks one. So let me go back uh, to the other blocks. So power on reset we have seen. Next is the ADC control generator. Okay, let us see that block ADC control generator. Okay, which is uh, level two, uh, which has a level two pulse generator and a delay module. Okay, so here we have the level two pulse generator uh, where we have a D flip flop and the output of uh, the third bit is getting uh, connected to an AND gate in order to generate the uh, pulse. Okay, generate the pulse, active high pulse. So I'll just show you the simulation results. So you can see here, if I zoom in, okay, uh, you can see, let me show you for a particular region alone only, then you'll be able to see the pulses. Okay, this is the clock. You can see the clock signal, right? And for that, we are generating the level pulses. Okay, you can see here, this is the output. This is the clear bit that we generate. And this is the pulse, an active high step pulse, active high step signal. Okay, uh, level two pulse generator. We output of the level two pulse generator. And then what else we have? Uh, so we have the delay block, a simple cascade of a two bit uh, register. Okay, and then we have the program counter. Uh, let me show you the program counter. So here you have the program counter. This is the circuit that we have built using D flip flops and this is what we already have, okay. This is uh, what we already have. Uh, okay, so we are uh, uh, just comparing those results. Okay, so let us see how it goes on. So I'll show you the output.
Okay, so you can see the uh, counter counter in the sense it is used to uh, check for the address, right? Uh, generate the addresses. Okay, and uh, you can see the addresses getting generated starting from zero to eight. And uh, once it counts eight, it again gets reset and then it counts eight. Okay, upon uh, getting the uh, clear signal, clear pulse. Okay, so after this, what as we have we have the latch and decode uh, circuit so our address has to be latched to uh, last until we get the next one right next uh, process so for that we have this uh, uh, latch okay so let me show you the output for this so you can see it here okay so this is about the a b and c inputs and outputs and then we have the sample and hold circuit so for sample and hold we have the ic right sorry ABC test so let me open that just a second Sorry, participants, if I am taking some time, just give me two minutes. Let me uh, open that circuit. So this is the sample and hold block that is available. Okay, we are making use of LF398, which is the IC uh, that is available in the library. Uh, it is from analog devices. Okay, so we are making use of that block in order to sample the uh, input signal. Okay, and then we put all of these things together. Okay, all those blocks together okay so that is what we have over here okay so let me show that here you see macro model so you can see here uh, so each and every block that i have shown uh, already okay we have uh, created a symbol for that okay top level hierarchy rather than uh, capturing this entire circuit each and every time uh, for your design for your analog to digital converter or uh, in whichever circuit this particular power on reset is required okay so what i can do is i can create a symbol for this so i have created a symbol over here okay and i am making use of this symbol in the uh, in the larger circuits so that i can save some time okay uh, so I have created the symbol for power on reset, level two pulse generator, four bit counter, okay, and uh, the start of conversion and end of conversion block. And finally, we have the uh, latch and decoder switch, okay. And now we can uh, test this overall circuit, okay. And if we go for the testing of this overall circuit, then we can get the simulation results just like uh, how we see over here okay these kind of results uh, so this we have not just uh, stopped with uh, the tool level design we have uh, uh, also taken it to uh, uh, system level what we have done is we procured each and every ic's okay like lf398 
we created our own power on reset we created our own uh, uh, control generator and uh, other modules okay and uh, we have created these stimuli okay by using function generators and all and we have uh, uh, done the test results okay we have tested it on board level also okay and we have got the results same kind of results that is uh, that we saw in the system okay so in our cat p spice so for uh, uh, these kind of exercises especially for students okay uh, the short cat p spice software will be most helpful and uh, it can also help you in uh, error debugging when you are uh, when you are building some larger systems larger uh, designs it will also help you in uh, uh, error debugging okay because you uh, you already have all those ic's uh, in the orcad libraries like uh, i can show you here okay so you can see the libraries okay like if you are uh, uh, looking at a modulator the modulator operational amplifier if you type op amp uh, you can see a generic op amp over here and if you look at uh, uh, lm741 okay lm741 is one of the uh, most widely used operational amplifier if you look for that that is also available so in number of uh, uh, so you can see these many operational amplifiers are available okay from national semiconductors on semiconductors texas instruments etc okay so you can test uh, by using any of these ic's okay and uh, uh, so that you can get an idea of what output should be expected out of a particular circuit okay uh, so that is the reason uh, that is how it is very much useful okay and each and every block can be designed in real time also by using a transistor by using a resistor capacitor etc okay so uh, and each and every block can be given as an exercise for students so that they'll be able to understand uh, uh, how uh, how they are working how a digital block works how a uh, how an analog block works in case if you are working on digital systems you need you'll be uh, asked to check out the functionality of logic gates right for second year and uh, third year students okay so you can uh, check for that 7404 right uh, so you have an inverter similarly you have the nand gate nor gate etc okay in order to uh, do the digital experiments and you have the uh, uh, adc okay adc 0808 so you can instantiate these uh, blocks and check for its performance real time okay so uh, that is the advantage of uh, this orcad p spice tool uh so in case if you are interested in the software interested in training of these softwares you can always approach us uh so let me share uh, the the email ids on chat box okay in case if you are interested in uh, procuring softwares like orcad and cadence uh, so for uh, uh software inquiry like uh, orcad and cadence you can uh, uh, reach us at and typing everything on the chat okay you can reach us at cadence_ support at the rate of intuple.com okay and uh, we'll help you help uh, our uh, sales representatives will uh, help us help you in uh, getting those software okay uh, and for any kind of uh, support okay for support request you can also Uh, reach us at cadence underscore support at the rate of intuple dot com and if you are interested in reaching out to me then you can uh, uh, reach me at navin dot shankar at the rate of 
ntupal.com okay and in case if you have some training inquiries like uh, uh, engaging you for uh, short term programs if, uh, faculty development programs uh, internship for students okay so you can reach us at www.ntupal.com okay you can also visit our website uh, so let me show you that also so if you visit our website it is ntupal.com okay if you just type ntupal.com okay you can see this is our home page okay and you can uh, uh, go to trainings okay and you can select your module for example if you are working on antenna rf uh, design iot or data science and sys mechanical vlsa programs uh, circuit design and simulation programs you can open just click on this tab okay for example if you are looking at iot internet of uh, things then you can just select this and you can go through the topics okay you'll get all the details uh, what are the topics and uh, uh, what is the date right topic date timings and the uh, prices if you click on the link you can uh, register for your register yourself for the program and uh, in case if you are uh, if any of the students or uh, uh, research scholars are looking for uh, training programs on uh, vlsi then you can just open this link we have a new program starting uh, tomorrow okay so you can also uh, just go for no more and if you select on this link you'll be getting a brief outline of what all topics will be discussed in the pro in the sessions okay and in each sessions you'll be uh, given a quiz okay and you can also uh, let us know your queries on uh, your area of interest okay so this is for vlsi and in case if you are looking for career builder programs you can also uh, reach us okay and for circuit design and simulation programs on rcad that we have been discussing you can also visit the website like this okay and you can see the topics that will be discussed okay uh, so that's all i have for now uh, and we are open for QA sessions, Q questions and answers. So let me know if you have any uh, queries. So I have a query from Amundra Das. Do EM radiation from cell tower uh, mobile phone harm living beings? Whether any specific component of radiation spectrum harm can it be reduced by a specific plantation around the base station and need some idea about this yeah uh, yes i have got your uh, question uh, uh, mudra das definitely electromagnetic radiations will affect living beings okay like uh, uh, i don't know about where you reside uh, may i know your lo locality geographical locality Bhuvaneshwar, okay. So I have not been there, so I don't have an idea. Uh, so I'm currently uh, based at Chennai now. Okay, so if you look at the birds, okay, like sparrows, small sparrows, uh, it is nearly extinct. I don't see any sparrows now, rather than uh, uh, what I have been seeing uh, uh, before 10 years, okay. So definitely the mobile uh, cell, mobile tower radiations have uh, uh, made, uh, uh, have caused more uh, living uh, beings to come to an extinct. Okay, the radiations have uh, uh, only certain bats, birds like pigeon. Uh, pigeon are, uh, able, are able to uh, manage the electromagnetic radiation. They are able to live with that radiation, but uh, uh, many birds have come to an extinction. Okay, if you uh, uh, if you go to Bangalore, for example, you hardly see any crow. Okay, 
so definitely it affects the living beings okay and uh, uh, if you need something then you have to lose something okay so that is the reason and in case if you are uh, planning to uh, reduce the radiation then obviously you have to plant more trees because uh, uh, trees are capable of absorbing those radiations okay and uh, uh, if the uh, waves are stronger enough then even your trees can't grow okay uh, so you need to think about it okay you need to decide upon the uh, spectrum that you are going to make use of for your application hope i answered your query namutra das specific component of uh, radiation spectrum uh, yes it depends on the type of uh, frequencies that you use anyway we have a, a safer uh, frequency which you can see as ism band okay let me show you the frequency band also uh, so you can see the uh, this is what uh, at the moment is safest ism band okay industry scientific and uh, uh, medical uh, this is what this frequency is currently the safest okay but you have various other uh, frequencies also okay but uh, most of them are harmful okay so uh, anything else samudra samudra das uh, hope i answered your query uh, in case if you have anything else then you can let me know any other queries from any other participants and uh, please let me know your feedback about this session so that uh, uh, we can improve ourselves and come back with uh, better content suggest a simulator to work on uwb radio ultra wide band radio you can go for uh, so are you planning to design any antenna like that antenna or you are trying to design a uwb radio and so no you are not going to going for antenna radio okay fine uh, so for that you can make use of uh, ansys you can go for ansys and you can also make use of arcad please please and uh, i don't have a deep idea on those radio kind of designs uh, because i'm still learning okay uh, so for system design you can make use of arcad and in case if you are trying to analyze uh, the things then you can go for uh, uh, cst and ansys okay yes anything else uh, hope i answered your query pradeep pradeep yeah anybody else any other queries and uh, participants please give me your feedback about uh, the session negative feedbacks are mostly welcome yes you can uh, you can, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and give me your feedback or you can type on the chat box also because uh, uh, i won't have a clear picture on your uh, online feedback form okay so uh, i think you can give me your feedback blunt on the chat box or you can unmute yourself and let me know hello sir yes yes sir uh, it's not about feedback it's anything but suggest you know to get more clarity on the question which i was talking about okay. sir um, this is pradeep uh, and yes, sir. Uh, sir actually i would like to design a, a complete uh, protocol layer stack and kind of thing from application layer to the radio layer i okay. mean physical layer level 
okay where i should have a provision to play with the you know uh, couple of radios like okay. you know once i want to have an integration or something like where i want to uh, play with the 2.4 or ism band or sometime i want to have a uwb radio where it, you know i want to work at uh, somewhere around 3.1 to 10 points is guy range okay. and uh, okay. how to do that sir i mean uh how to have a such kind of do we have some kind of simulator which can provide these kind of facilities or something like that uh let me check sir i'll uh, check and i'll get back to you you can uh, uh, write your query to my email id i think i have shared it on the chat box already uh, i need to check on this okay so sure, you sir, can sure. uh, send me your query on the uh, to my email id so that i can check and let you know sure sure thank you thank yeah yeah thank you sir thank the, the session is good sir thank you Yeah thank you sir thank you very much uh thank you navin thanks for your feedback uh anybody else any other queries sir i think uh, there is uh, no more queries from participants sir okay sir okay fine all uh, right let me conclude the session sir yeah Kind words are short and easy to say, but their echoes are truly endless. In this way, I would like to thank our today's resource person, Mr. Navin Shankar, field application engineer, Interpol Technologies, Bangalore, for providing a wonderful session on the topic of cognitive radio and its applications. On behalf of Kolkata College of Engineering and Technology and the organizing team, we once again thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Uh, thank you all thanks for your patience and in case if you have any queries you can write it to my email id uh, okay and uh, in case if you have any doubts on softwares also you can uh, reach out to me okay thank you thank you all thanks for your patience have a good day
என்னடா இது ஒண்ணுமே பிரிண்டே தெரிய மாட்டேது பதினாலு அவர் போட்டிருக்காங்க நீ மட்டும் பதி 